Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we have this push mower and they're saying it's got a blown head gasket and uh, it does not have any compression when I tried turning it over. So today I'm going to show you how to change a head gasket. Alright, we have a Crestman 6.25 150 cc overhead valve. And first thing when it comes to ordering parts, you just scan this barcode right here, and that'll bring up the uh, the user manual at Briggs and Stratton. Then in the manual is where you'll find your illustrated parts list. On your older Briggs and Stratton engines, right above the spark plug, will be your model, your type, and your code. Some of them are also written right here on this shield. This is a 1969 cast iron Briggs and Stratton and on these the model type code is found right here on the side of the shroud. So once you have your illustrated parts list brought up you'll go down through the pages until you find the part you're looking for. Beside the part will be a number. You take that number and you go down through your list of parts. Then once you find that number Beside the number will be the Briggs and Stratton parts number along with the description. In this case, 592358 was the uh, head gasket number. Now with Briggs and Stratton, they've kind of changed the numbers on some of their parts over the years. So there is a new number and an old number to some parts. And a lot of parts will have multiple part numbers, but they'll still fit. take a look in here at the cylinder and there's a scratch right there at the very bottom of the cylinder usually uh, that's not a good thing um, kind of rule of thumb if it catches your fingernail it's kind of an issue this one here just barely catches my fingernail so I think we'll be all right with that here's the new head gasket when you put this back in just make sure your push rod holes line up but really the way that this is designed it can only go it can only line up with the bolts one way but just make sure just in case 
if you think you got a bent valve uh, if you get in the dark room and take a flashlight and shine up into one of your ports and watch for light coming out around the seat right here I would also check around the valve seat make sure there's nothing stuck in there no carbon build up and I can move these valves with just my fingers the valve springs aren't very stiff on these all right I got my head gasket on there and I check to make sure that the push rod holes line up with the holes in the head and take your 10 millimeter socket and run these in by hand okay I have the head on now make sure you check your torque specs and torque sequence for your engine now I have the head on with no rocker arms or push rods and what this will do is I know that these valves are closed because if you have your push rods on and maybe they're out of adjustment or if they're properly adjusted and the compression release is holding your exhaust valve slightly open you won't have compression but right now I know that they're completely shut so I should have compression which I do when I turn it I can feel the resistance so that's a good sign this engine had no compression before when you're putting your carburetor adapter back in make sure this o-ring's here make sure it's not torn or broke this will create a vacuum leak and the engine won't run correctly it'll actually run lean and it'll probably surge and I can't stand a surging engine on these lawnmowers Now with the carburetor, it's a good time to go ahead and check your hose, make sure it's not dry rotted, cracked, make sure these clamps are on there, they're not broken, because uh, I'll have a fuel leak, so it's easier just to go ahead and do this now, but it's not very hard to take these apart to change a hose. As you can see, they're pretty simple designed engines. And just like with the carburetor adapter, here's another O-ring. It sets right inside of your carburetor right there then you got another retainer it comes in and it just pops into place and if that's missing or it has fallen out and actually slid back the uh, carburetor adapter it will create another vacuum leak and, of course, and again you'll have a lean mixture and it'll just, it just won't run right Okay, make sure you hook up your throttle linkage back to your governor. Make sure this spring is here. This is actually your throttle. Then this rod here is for your choke. And it'll come over here to the uh, exhaust. Now for your air filter housing, there's four bolts, two thread into plastic, and the two fine thread screw into the metal bracket right here. And that's also what holds your carburetor in place. And here's another O-ring, and make sure that's there. If it's broken or missing, it won't create a vacuum leak since it's past the butterfly valve but it will allow dirt into the engine and that could 
damage the engine. On the back of your filter, you got two holes. Just slips in a place like that. And your mufflers hold on by two bolts, one at the top, one at the bottom. And don't forget to hook up the uh, choke linkage. And make sure you start these bolts by hand. You don't want to strip them out. Next, we're going to install the push rods and just make sure that these are, aren't bent when you put them back in. One thing you can do is twist them side by side and these, as you can see, are good and straight. They don't wobble and make sure the ends aren't damaged in any way. Then you just push them back through here until you feel them go into that tappet. Also, you can put your fingers on them like this and turn this motor over and they, they will move for you. And just make sure that they're in that tappet where they belong or else that they won't run. Next are the rocker arms. The exhaust is longer, the intake is the shorter one. And then they have indentions on one end for the push rod. Make sure you get that correct. And that'll be followed by a retainer. They pivot on this little tapered end here. On the other end is your set screw. Later on we'll be using this to set the valve adjustment, also known as valve lash. I grabbed the engine out of the scrap pile. It's a little easier to show you on one of these flatheads or L-head engines. So we'll start with the intake stroke. The intake valve just opened. And when we get to the bottom of the stroke, the valve will close. Now we'll be getting ready to start the compression stroke. As the piston comes up, you'll see this exhaust valve will slightly open for the compression release right before the piston reaches top dead center. Then you have our power stroke, and this is where you want to set your, your valve clearance. As we come down on the power stroke, we start to come back up, exhaust valve opens for the exhaust stroke. Then it just starts over again. There's the four cycles, right, where you get a four cycle engine. If you have the engine in, in like say, on the wrong stroke and you set the rocker arms, when it, when you turn go to start it it'll actually be loose or something will be out of adjustment because you set them 
when the when the lifters were either up or halfway up. Now I did call it a lifter. Uh, in these small engines, they're called a tappet, but it does the same exact thing as a lifter in a car engine. Um, it just rises against the cam lobe. Then when the cam lobe pushes it up, it pushes the push rod up, which pushes your rocker arm. It goes against this pivot and it pushes the valve to open it. All right, I'll show this one more time. So there the valve just opened for your exhaust stroke. There it's closing, getting ready to go to the intake. As you can see, the intake valve is opening. So now we're on the intake stroke. And now that closed. And as you can see, the exhaust valve is getting ready to open again for the compression release when your compression stroke. Then there, the compression release closed. So now you will be building compression. Both rocker arms will be loose. And this is when you make your valve adjustment. And the way you adjust these, is you take a feeler gauge and you put between the rocker arm and the valve stem. And you slide it back and forth. While you have your feeler gauge in here and you're slightly sliding it back and forth, You'll take your wrench and you adjust this adjuster. And what it'll do is you'll feel a slight drag on your feeler gauge as you slide it back and forth. Once you get a slight drag, that's adjusted. While with your wrench, holding this still, you'll take an Allen wrench in here and you will tighten this. Once you've tightened this and holding this still so it no longer moves the adjustment, that'll lock all that into place so it doesn't move or back off once the engine's running. If the engine's running and that backs off, it'll, it'll just shut off almost like, like a blue head gasket again. Some specifications will have a hot and a cold spec. This engine only has one specification for the valve flash. So once you set it, it's set you don't have to worry about running the engine letting it warm up then going back through and readjusting the valves again uh, because when the metal's cold it contracts when it's warm or hot it expands and that'll change the valve flash just a little bit this video helped you with uh, repairing a head gasket on your lawnmower um, some, some of these engines they have plastic gears and they have plastic cams and that plastic will just break and basically the cam won't turn when the crankshaft will so everything's out of time uh, I think these engines are clearance engines which means the pistons will not hit the valve if they're stuck open but if, the, if they do hit the valves, that will cause a lot of damage. Pretty much just ruined an engine at that point. It would just be too much to fix it. 
uh, you'd be better off just finding another used engine. And uh, so, and here soon we'll be getting back to this engine. This is that power unit I posted the video of. It's probably, it's been a while now. And that's back from the machine shop. I started working on some of it, got the cam back in it, the lifters, all that's in it, got the governor back in it. Then here's the head. We need to go through, start cleaning that up. I did uh, have a valve job done to it. I had to replace two broken studs. So this will be a video here in the near future. Well, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.